Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John many a true nerd, and welcome back to Fallout 3, you only live once. Last time, we completed Shock Value, the second of the big three quests in Broken Steel, bringing us agonizingly close to the end of the game, despite the fact we've only got 83 hit points remaining, and the Enclave, the last time I ran into them over at their communications base properly, did way more damage to me than that. But today... Today we've got a different quest to look at because, as I've mentioned before, rather surprisingly in fact, I received a notification on my Pip-Boy when we got back to the Capital Wasteland. And that is that trouble on the home front has actually restarted. Now, I looked into this a little bit more and some comments helped me out on this. Basically, um, trouble on the home front kicks off after uh, the waters of life and then runs either until a given point further in the quest, which I believe is Garden of Eden. After that point, it shuts down. Or after 15 full in-game days, it also shuts down. However, for some reason, I can't figure out exactly why this is, if it has shut down, it reactivates when you return from the pit. That's what I was told in the comments. I've no bloody clue why, but I'm thrilled that it does because it means I've got another chance to do this because it's actually a really cool, interesting quest. Anyway, let's go do that. Look, they're giving the water away. What do you care whether you leave it all here or somewhere else? I don't really care. I mean, you'll have to take it up with those boys. You're not leaving here with that water. We need it. We're taking it. I hope you're not thinking. We just need the water. All of it. Sorry, pal, but you already got your quota. Our orders are to take the rest of this to Big Town. All right, let's move out. Come on, Joe, help me get the water. And interestingly, these guys decide that the best idea that they've got is to attack the Brotherhood. Very, very stupid idea. And they all die in seconds. Ooh! And Deputy World got involved. I guess he is actually aligned to Megaton, though I didn't know he did that. And with that, yep, we are back and hidden. There's no danger or anything. With that, indeed, the water caravan trundles on its way towards Big Town, apparently. And, uh, yep, the people from Megaton should not have demanded the water. Anyway, with that fun little event complete, we just head via Springvale and head up the way. Actually, wait, hang on. Oh, sorry. That's, I thought, hang on, I thought I killed the guy who was here. No, uh, the green compass tick is in fact that Enclave I bought, who, despite the fact, you know, I've repeatedly blown up the Enclave, does not attack me on sight, but I guess maybe that's just not how they're programmed. They're just programmed to defend themselves if they're attacked, but other than that, don't really cause much in the way of trouble. So up the hill here, and back to Vault 101. And unlike last time, we can get our way back in pretty easily because the master told us on the radio signal she changed the password to... Ooh, no, Radroach. That'll just be a Radroach. Fine. Okay, there are enemies in here. It's not It's not a total cakewalk. So, enter a martyr into the terminal. Admittedly, there's absolutely nowhere where I could enter a martyr because there's no keypad, but whatever game. Yep, password a martyr entered on here. That is the A key, and that's the M... <laughs> There's a T, and then presumably there's three other letters. Who knows which ones? You, you've kind of got a limited choice of passwords. Vault 101 creaks open in that beautiful way that it does. I do like the vaults. I mean, I love the way vaults open in, in Fallout 4 as well, but to my mind, I actually prefer Fallout 3s because it's a bit more big and creaky. It just feels to me like it's slightly weightier. Now, uh, there was definitely red in here. So, where is the cockroach? Cockroach, I saw. I know there's a Radroach in here. You know, I probably shouldn't use the Metal Blaster. Hilariously, I don't think I've actually brought any, like, crappy weak weapons that are useful for this sort of thing here. So, unfortunately, we're just going to have to be, yeah, be using the Metal Blaster. And, oh, poor Steve Armstrong, who was killed by a Radroach because, ooh, he had a Stealth Boy on him. Was he trying to escape by any chance? I don't know where we would have got a Stealth Boy from. Would have thought technology that advanced must be pre-war. In which case, how did it make it this long in the vault? Well, actually, I guess we do know that on occasion in the past, at least, people have left the vault. Maybe it came from the outside world. So who knows, eh? Who knows? And then Jim Wilkin. Wait, Jim? I guess I still thought it looked like a female face to me, but I guess, yeah, that could be a male face. Jim Wilkins, who also maybe tried to escape or maybe died. Who knows? We know there's been significant upheaval in this vault and a few corpses lying around. Well, makes sense. Crack open the doors and I believe straight away we run into someone. Stop right there. I don't know how you got in here, but... Hold on. Wait a minute. It's you. I hardly recognized you with all the dust and grime from out there. The invisibility and the ghoul face and the head wrap that you stole off a dead DJ didn't help either. And I need to talk with Marta. I got the message that she transmitted. 
Amada's message. I don't know what you're talking about, but I'd keep that under your hat for her sake. She could get in real trouble if people found out she sent you a message. So could I, just for talking with you now. Quickly correct myself, it was just a hunch. Maybe. She isn't the only one, that's for sure. Ever since last night, it's been madness down here. Nothing but trouble. And what exactly has gone on, Officer Gomez? Why don't you explain the situation? Let me bring you up to speed. It seems like it's been a mighty long time. The night you and your dad left, everything went crazy. Between the bugs and the confusion, we lost a lot of people. When your dad opened up that gate, he let loose a whole lot of crap, if you'll pardon my language. And indeed, that was definitely the overseer's fault, I would say. Really? Well, that would explain a few things, all right. It's a good thing you're here after all. After that night, a lot of your friends started thinking, if it's safe to go outside, why stay down here forever? And that's not the sort of thing the overseer likes to hear. Things have gotten pretty tense. I probably ought to put you under arrest and take you into the overseer, but frankly, I know better than to try that. Meanwhile, some of your old friends think opening the vault is a good idea. I bet those rebels would like a word with you. Now more than ever. Of course, if you want, you can just walk away as if you were never here. Out of respect for your dad, I won't even tell anyone I saw you. And indeed, that's why I love this quest. It's a really good example of, like, people sometimes say, like, oh, Bethesda versus Obsidian. Bethesda put together some really good quests in Fallout 3 that are really interesting and lots of alternative solutions and, like, multiple different ways you can try and resolve the situation, including ones that are totally different from what anyone actually tells you to do. You can just go out of your own way and create your own solutions if you want to. Brilliant little quest trouble on the home front. So thrilled we get to show it off here. And uh, exactly why don't the rebels just leave? The door appears to be open. It's not that they want to leave. It's that they want to open the door and interact with the rest of the world. But that would risk the whole vault. So indeed, do we want a closed vault society or an open vault society? And can you leave me somewhere, Officer Gomez? I guess you've had a lot on your mind since you were here last. Where do you want to go? I would like to go and see Amata. So at this point, he will just lead me through the vault nice and slowly. I think at this point, we should be pretty much safe. There might be like a tiny amount of looting I could do around here, but honestly, vaults aren't quite the- oh yeah, there's uh, there's definitely something around here. Uh, you just wait there for a second. I can see you've got a rad roach problem. I will take care of it for you. And obviously this staircase leads down to the big central hall that we're very, very familiar with. Wait here. This doesn't look good. You know I can't do that, Freddy. Now get back down below before I have to do something we'll both regret. What? You're gonna lock me up like you did to Brotch? You can't cage a tunnel snake, man, because we rule! Stay back! Taylor, stop shooting, damn it! You almost shot Freddy, you random old person who I don't know if I even know or not. I didn't mean to fire. I really didn't. I just wanted to scare him off. But he had a knife! So yeah, we're back now in the little kind of central area. In fact, there's the Overseer up there. Another real fun fact about this area, by the way, is uh, because the Overseer survived the night, the event of escape, uh, that means you can kind of come to a bit of a peaceful resolution with the Overseer or with the Marty. You can basically take the vault any way that you want. If you kill the Overseer on that night, then someone else is Overseer and he's much less reasonable and he can't really be dealt with. He just tries to straight up murder you and it basically mostly ends in violence and you have to put him down as well. I think I could go this way just to loop up towards the Overseer's office. I do know that uh, area. But um, things are a little bit kind of weird now because uh, the doors that were blocked off and you couldn't go through when you were here in Escape have all changed. Uh, so for example, uh, this door is now inaccessible when that led to a storeroom that you were allowed to access when you were last here. Whereas I believe this door was inaccessible last time, but now this leads us down to lower level, but you've never been through it before. The entire kind of vault layout has changed. It just makes the whole area a bit tricky to navigate through. Though I do just like the Overseer just watching you in silence. It's rather nice. Oh boy, are you in trouble? Uh, in all fairness, I've got a laser shotgun and a ghoul mask and invisibility armor. I think I'm fine, to be honest. Obviously, the cafeteria, which we passed through briefly before. This is obviously the same room that my birthday party happened in when I was 10, starting here and heading over there. Which means we also know the way down to the reactor. Amada's up there, in the clinic with the rest of them. 
I'd take you closer, but they don't get along with security. Good luck. Okay, so he now leaves us here. And obviously we know the reactor is down that way because we went there previously. Uh, in when we were 10, that's where we kind of went down to the rage, where we practiced with our little BB gun all those years ago. Head around here, however, and if he survived the night of escape, butchers here. Damn, look who's come waltzing back into the vault. It takes some real balls coming back here after everything you and your dad screwed up. But if you've got to be back, might as well make yourself useful. You got to help us. Even these rebels just want the option to go outside for lousy trading and stuff. I just want to get the hell out of here for good. Just make it so we can leave the vault and I can go out there for my new life. So Butch opens up the third option, which is if I were to sabotage some of Vault 101, everyone would be forced to leave, which Butch wants to do because he just wants the freedom to leave entirely. Though admittedly, there's nothing to stop him just leaving. The door's open. He could just go by himself. But, you know, if you feel like completely screwing over your entire vault, sure, why not destroy the vault? You know where the reactor is. That's where you can do that. But anyway, we're also back to another area that we're familiar with from our childhood. We've got uh, the classroom where we didn't bother to take the goat. Right here, of course. And as you go around the vault, you can kind of see that there's a generational aspect uh, to this for the most part, which is generally the rebels, those who want a more open vault, are part of the younger generation, whereas the older generation have sided with the overseer and the security forces. But anyway, head over to the clinic, which is where uh, Amata herself is. Oh my god, you're back! You got my message and actually came back! Well, actually, no, I missed that you were in trouble, completely missed the opportunity, several weeks and or months passed, I kind of went into space and to Pittsburgh, not sure which one was nicer, to be honest, then I went into a VR simulation for a few days, and then I went and dealt with the Enclave, then I provided free fresh water to everyone forever, but now, now you are top of my to-do list, Amata. People died that night, and all because my father went crazy to keep someone from opening the vault. And worst of all, then we found out the vault had been opened before. And they'd lied about it all our lives. And how exactly did you find that out? Though, admittedly, I already knew. I just, you know, didn't really bother to tell you on the way out. I kind of found the information about that in the overseer's terminal. Should have mentioned it, sorry. After that night, I heard Wally's father say we should never have taken you or your dad into the vault. I found out the vault used to be open, but for some reason, they closed it off when we were babies and swore to hide that it had ever happened. But keeping that lie meant Jonas's death. And even though we know the truth, the Overseer still won't let us make our own decisions. Admittedly, I'm not actually sure off the top of my head why the vault was reclosed after it was once opened. I'm genuinely not sure quite why that is. I'll have a little look see if I can find the law while I'm doing this quest, but off the top of my head, I'm actually not sure. Well. Butch does, but he's too big a coward to go out on his own. Ah, and there we've got a solution for why Butch doesn't just leave. He's too much of a coward to do it by himself. He wants to force everyone out with him so that he's got some company while he does it. Oh, Butch. Quite a pathetic character, really. So now we get our first big choice. We can tell Amata that either we'll stop her father and his guards, or I can tell her that she needs to understand the dangers outside the vault and why it's safe of her to stay in here. I can go down either route. I've got a completely free choice. So, I swear I'll stop your father and his guards. You will? Thank goodness for that. No matter what I say, he just doesn't listen. He just spends all day up in his office. But you've actually been outside, so you can tell him what it's like with first-hand experience. Just, please don't do anything rash or hurt him, alright? And of course, when I say I'm going to stop him, there's nothing to stop me just getting a big gun, going and murdering him and the guards right now. That counts as dealing with him, and then she becomes the overseer. Though admittedly, she won't be too fond of you for it. But instead, we need to look for some alternative, peaceful solutions. Beautiful. Though not before, of course, we go and have a chat to Andy, because Andy's the best character in this entire damn game. Hello, Andy. Ah, another patient. What's it to be, eh? Appendectomy? Tonsillectomy? Hysterectomy? Andy, what exactly happened? Why are you covered in blood? Ah, yes, a rather unfortunate incident. In all the commotion, Miss Beatrice suffered a rather bad sprain in her left toe. The big one. Obviously, I had no choice but to amputate the leg. Yeah, I am sorry to say the operation was uh, not a uh, success. Andy's the best robot. They made you the doctor, Andy? But of course! With your father's departure from the vault and Jonas's untimely demise, 
The overseer had to take swift action. <laughs> I like how much Andy's enjoying this. So, of course, poor Beatrice. Beatrice, who gave me those terrible, terrible poems when I was a child. She is now dead. And sadly does not have a poem on her. It would be nice if she had a poem about mortality or death on her body. But no, she does not. Instead, we can finally crack open the, uh, the framed quote. The Revelation 21.6, the quote that my father liked so much. So, yes. Open the frame quote. It was locked average, meaning um, it's physically impossible to open it while you're here in the vault the first time. It cannot be done because there's no way to get your lock pick up to uh, 50. Even if you like uh, max out perception and then tag lock pick, it's still not high enough. So cannot be done. And that gets us 300 bottle caps, home sweet home, a little note there, and a schematic for the rocket launcher, which is really rather cool. So yeah, I don't know how he has a schematic for the rocket launcher. Though in this case, obviously, it just gets improved because I've already had one. I guess it makes sense because we know though that Dad did kind of did swing by and stop off in Megaton, so maybe he picked it up there or something. And Home Sweet Home is the tape we've now found. Well, here we are. Nestled all safe and snug inside Vault 101. How may I serve it's so Mr. cold Mr. down here. Colder still with Catherine gone. No, Catherine. I so wish you were here with me. How the hell am I supposed to do this by myself? Live down in this hole. Take care of our child. But this is our life now. So I guess I'd better get used to it. The overseer who runs the place is an overbearing bully. But I've dealt with worse. Confirmation from my father there that indeed he came from outside of the vault. Though I will try and figure out during this uh, during this kind of whole period exactly why it was the vault was sealed in the first place. Maybe the overseer will tell me. Now I'm allowed. No, okay. So they've blocked off that way. This quest I didn't prep for because um I wasn't expecting it to. Uh, I wasn't actually expecting it to come up. I thought I'd missed it. So yes, this is kind of me. I'm having a bit of fun with this quest, because, yeah, I, I honestly didn't know this was going to be here. Anyway, let's head down to the sub-level. This is the alternative solution, other than simply taking a martyr or the overseer's side. You can just straight up, uh, you know, sabotage the entire vault, which does technically solve Vault 101's troubles, but... You never should have left, kid. Now we'll make sure uh -oh. nobody ever leaves again. Uh-oh. 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 Okay, Th those guys are hostile. Right, I shouldn't have come down here. Um... They're hostile and they spoke to me, but I'm still hidden. Right. That's weird. Are they... Can they not see me? Who's down here? Officer Wilkins. Well, alright, fine. He's dead now. He kind of started it. Kind of, anyway. Uh, right, definitely don't come down here on your of once rules. Because apparently there are actual security guards down here. Uh, that door's inaccessible. I'd love it if there was a, a rad roach that spawned up here on this area. Oh, I can actually get back here. I'd forgotten this barricade's actually fallen. So for once, I can actually bloody get back to this whole area. This right side. Yep. I think that works pretty powerfully. <laughs> I like how obviously it swings with much more force than it did when you shot it with the BB gun. It actually responds to the greater force of uh, the metal blaster. Right. I'm just going to stay hidden for a second because apparently... There's trouble down here, and I probably shouldn't come down here at all. This strikes me as a terrible idea, in fact, but... Let's see if there's anything else down here. Anyone else want to cause trouble with me? Or is everyone else fine with me? That's Stanley. I think Stanley's got some harsh words for me. I think he's he's not a fan of me, actually. Hello, Stanley. Our water chip's pretty delicate right now, but I'm working on setting her right again. A water chip that's a little bit delicate. And indeed, that's where the solution to this here... Uh, this here problem where we blow up. Oh, we don't blow up the vault. Blowing up the vault, that's such a that's such a dramatic way of phrasing what we're doing here. Instead, just head into the control panel round here. Just double check there's no, no more flipping guards in here. I don't know. The reactor itself through here is inaccessible. That's probably a good idea. Let's not go into the reactor. Instead, just loop round to the control panel and we've got ourselves a hard locked maintenance terminal. Well, I'm going to crack open this, if only for the experience. I think that might actually... Uh, push me up into the next level. There we are. Television. 50 XP should push me up, I think. Indeed, it does. And what I can do is, uh, yeah, if I just kind of basically fiddle with these options for testing air filtration and begin the water chip service, uh, I can basically screw up everything. And I don't want to do that. Instead, I want to level up to level 23. And doing that, I want to get my lockpick 
up to 100. That's pretty much the last skill I need to be at 100, to be honest. Speech is effectively 100 already. Unarmed, I don't care about. Repair, honestly, alien epoxies have rendered that pretty much entirely redundant. I don't need repair to be higher than 76, that's fine. Melee weapons, pretty much redundant to me. Medicine, I needed to cap that at 70 just for a couple of perks, but other than that, pretty much useless to me. Lockpick, 100. Explosives, might be nice if explosives were higher, it might be nice if mines had been more powerful, but honestly, not necessary really in the slightest. Instead, we can continue. And I'm not sure if there's a good perk here. I know I said there was a good perk I needed to pick up, it just wasn't from level 23. Uh, yeah, we'll get to that later. We'll get to that later. And now I just need to figure out if there's anything useful here at all. Well, it's probably not going to help me that much, but concentrated fire, in theory, if I were to kind of focus on someone's head over and over again, could possibly save my bacon down the line. May as well take that. To be honest, I was more about getting the lockpick up to 100. That's a very, very important indeed for something we will be getting to shortly. Yes, that will do. Instead, we just back away from that computer and head on our way. Actually, don't head on our way that quickly. Head on our way slowly and cautiously, because I'm really nervous about the fact that apparently the security in this vault is, on occasion, willing to just straight up attempt to murder me. I'm very, very lucky that uh, even though he did have a uh, kind of a speech that he was going to give me, regardless, even after he had given me the speech... Because I was hidden, he couldn't see me, so he just kind of, therefore, walked away. Yes, let's just leave this lower level. That was uh, a little bit nerve-wracking. I'm worried that might happen again. Though, equally, most of the guys in here only have batons, for the most part, and I can stay hidden. Like, if I run into baton guys, fine, I can just shotgun them in a single hit with the metal blaster. They've really picked a very bad fight they didn't really want to be picking, but still a little bit cautious. I could... I could take a few hits without too much trouble, but I'm still a bit worried by the whole situation. Now, the upper level up here, this leads up to... Does this lead back to the central area? Yeah, that'll lead back to the atrium. Fine. So I want to check out the apartments first. So the apartments, of course, this area is very, very familiar to us. This is an area that uh, we came to at the very beginning of Escape. Meaning that we can indeed go and find Butcher's mother. I wonder if she has anything interesting to say. Uh, I'm not sure. This is all, yeah, this is stuff I do not very clearly remember. Uh, Butcher's Mother. Butcher's Mother, where are you? Baseball bat there. This is the right place, isn't it? If it's got the the floral... No, this isn't the right place. It's not got the floral pattern on it. We need a... Maybe it's one more along? Well, I'm fairly sure from the location, this would indeed be uh, Butch and Butcher's Mother's apartment, but the wallpaper's not right, and I can't find any other, so I'm just not sure if I can even find... Uh, Butcher's mother here. Sadly, I think we cannot. Meanwhile, I've just found the body of Chip Taylor for no well-explained reason. I'm not sure what happened to him. And this is another door that leads up to the atrium or upper level. Okay, I'm kind of curious where this one leads in that case. Okay, so that one leads to there. And I'm guessing that this door here leads back down into the atrium, right? Uh, oh no, no it can't because it's, uh, it's blocked off. So that's presumably the only way to get back up in that case. Now, I assume what's going on is if maintenance that way. So that's ways back to the entrance. Where has... Yeah, where's Officer Gomez gone? I don't know where Officer Gomez has gone. Never mind, I'll have to do this by myself, which is probably a terrible idea, so I'll have to do it while I'm hidden just in case. Obviously, now at this point, we're following the uh, way that we uh, went when we actually left the vault in the first place. So now we're just going around here, and I'm a bit worried that, yeah, the bloody... Police will attack us again. You are... Wait, who are you? You're... You're the overseer. Well, I don't want to speak to you just yet. I want to speak to you in your office in a minute. Uh, actually, I'm not even sure why you've left your office. It's kind of old... You don't think, yeah, let's, let's catch you now, actually. Why not? Well, I see you've returned. I have indeed. Done with the dust and ruins of the wasteland, are you? Given up looking for daddy? Thought you could just slink back in like a teen missing curfew? Well, that's too bad. You have no future in this vault. You're tainted. Oh dear. You're the crazy bastard who murders Jonas with your leadership. No one in this vault has much of a future. But I mean, Lay off the evil banter. <laughs> I'm curious about... Yeah, actually, I quite like that. Lay off the evil banter. I'm curious about your side in all this. Really? And here I had expected you to be full of bullets and bravado, but short on brains. Perhaps you've grown up since you left our vault. I regret the unfortunate events of that night. But I'm afraid that once your father left us, they were unavoidable. The sad truth is that his actions presented a real and direct threat to the future success of our vault. 
And so, regrettably, they had to be opposed. And like all the best plots and quests and stories in Fallout 3, the Overseer from a certain point of view does have a point. I personally don't think he's in the right, I think a martyr's more in the right, but he does have a point. And if you want to search around, you can actually find evidence that supports both points of view, as we'll kind of get into. And what exactly do you mean by the future success of the Vault, Overseer? Ah, you're paying attention. Good for you. These vaults were designed to be safe havens for humanity, you see. But more than that, they were designed to test and protect us. And none more so than our Vault 101. We are to be a pure and protected breed of humans, never tainted by the ravages of the war above. Well then, why did you bloody let my father in in the first place? Uh... Doesn't have to be isolated. Yeah, I honestly don't know why I wouldn't reply, but you let in people from the outside before. Why did you do that then? And the vault doesn't have to be isolated to keep its residents safe, I would say. And what makes you so certain about that? I can't imagine you're still so naive after spending time in that hell outside. None of them know what the outside is like, and most of them would die out there. Then the rest of us inside would eventually die out too. I won't risk all of our lives just for a few people's passing fancy of taking a wasteland vacation. I hope you can understand that. Again, he's got a point. And indeed, at this point, you can change to his side. You can say, I can put a stop to the rebels. And then once you've done that again, there's nothing to stop you going and gunning down all the rebels. He won't be thrilled about it. His own daughter will die. But you can. The freedom's there. No one's marked as essential. Brilliant. Great work, Bethesda. Fantastic plot. I just wish there was more of this sort of thing in Fallout 3 and indeed in Fallout 4. But no, the rebels are right. You need to open the vault, Overseer. Oh, do you? What makes you think you know how better to protect this vault? And I could use speech 100% because uh, I'm so charismatic and have so much practice with speech upon the surface now. But instead, I'm going to find a way to convince you. Just you wait, because there's some more fun ways than just a speech check. I deeply doubt it. But your naive ramblings do have a certain entertainment value. You ever think possibly less people would rebel against you if you didn't actively try and sound like an evil supervillain? And indeed, some of the most interesting stuff that we can find is actually through here. If we just kind of go through this area towards, of course, past the kind of uh, with this little tech room and towards the prison and the overseer's office. Now, I will go back into hidden just in case there are more problems yet. So obviously the, uh, the jail area up here near the overseer's office is the first place that we want to stop off. There's a computer terminal here, which is locked to average. However, if you crack open this door, which is locked... Then inside we will find Mr. Broch, our old teacher, who let us get away without doing the goat, so I like him a lot. It's been a while, kid. I guess the goat couldn't have predicted how you'd turn out, could it? Remind me to add a question about rescuing your teacher from the vault jail. If the vault ever goes back to normal, that is. By the way, while I was in there, I heard some worrying things from the guards. And what exactly did you hear? I heard one of the guards talking about some sort of plan to raid Amada and the rest of us. I didn't hear anything else, but I think he read it on the security terminal. So maybe you can find more there. I'm sure it's bad news for us all. And oh dear, a plan to raid Amada and the rebels with force. Actually, I thought I remembered him giving you the password to the terminal, but it would seem that he doesn't. And there might be one somewhere around, I swear there is. Ooh, a nice free stim pack, lovely. Ah, yes, there it is. The jail cell password is indeed in this here weapons locker in case you're incapable of passing the uh, the average lock on the computer. But I'll just do that myself just for the XP. And just like Mr. Broch said, we can obviously lock or unlock the cell door. But there is also a confidential memo here. Confidential top level security only from the chief officer on the raid on the rebels. In light of increased agitation from the rebel elements, I have come to the conclusion that we can no longer afford to be merciful to this scum. While some may hold out hope for a peaceful resolution, it's only a matter of time before they decide to take the fight to us, or worse yet, our families. 
I propose a midnight raid into their compound. Live ammo, zero tolerance. Make an example of the first two who fight back and the rest will fall in line. We may lose a kid or two, but we'll save the vault as a whole and that's what counts. You are not to inform the overseer and some of our softer security guards about this plan as they will only object and ensure our defeat. Once the deal's done, they'll see it was worth the price. This will show those scum what happens when you step out of line in our vault. So indeed, a plot which the overseer was not aware of to go in and straight up start shooting at the rebels, which includes his daughter. Now obviously, that is very likely enough to get him to calm down and realise just how badly things have got out of control. Now of course we could continue around to the, um, the overseer's office at this point, but I'm kind of curious where this tour leads because I'm not sure. Uh, where would this go to? No idea, let's find out. Lower level somewhere. Ah, this is where that staircase on the far side of the reactor goes. Okay, fine, so that leads up towards the overseer, fine. Obviously, I know how to navigate it perfectly during escape, but once the doors are all unlocked and some of the doors you did go through are barricaded, I'm a bit lost. Should be noted that, like, basically all of the drops in Vault 101 refill after you leave, so the desk, which, which did have pre-war money in them, have pre-war money in them again, which is lovely. Meanwhile, over in the overseer's office, uh, or rather the bedroom, sorry, in his dresser, the overseer's office key is still there and his ammo has been restocked. So in case you still haven't got your... In fact, no, it's not even if you don't have uh, a lockpick, in fact, because, uh, yeah, that lock is very easy. So even if you have zero lockpick, you can still do that. But just in case you're struggling, there is still indeed a password. And the bobby pins in a martyr's room have also refilled. So a free five bobby pins there. But the door is still open, presumably from when the overseer came through a second ago. And indeed, if we just go up to his terminal while he's just looking out here, because we are invisible at the moment, may as well just rob him while we're here. Because his 120 rounds have also refilled, as is a supply of stim packs and mentats and his password. But I think this computer will still be open from the last time we were here. Yes, indeed. But this has updated a little bit. Previously, you may recall there were only four options here. The security dossiers, the scouting report, the vault tech instructions, and the overseer's tunnel. Now, obviously, the security dossiers have been updated since the last time we were here. And indeed, as we might reasonably suspect, in the entry on the rebels themselves at the bottom there, their dwindling food and proximity to the dangerous Dr. Andy are sure to drain their morale. Andy was deliberately made the doctor in order to try and, yeah, upset and demoralise the rebels. Which does make sense. He is a bit of a monster. Though he doesn't mean to be, he is trying his best. He just loves his work, damn it. And as for Amata herself... Pains me dearly to know that a martyr is behind the rebellious element in my vault. If she weren't their leader, it would be a simple matter to break their spirits and bring them into line with the vault's time-proven isolation plan. But with her as a central figure in their rebellion, I must refrain from the more persuasive tactics at security's disposal. So indeed, he is worried about his daughter's involvement. Though that does raise questions about his suitability to be overseer. Because he's basically openly saying there, his daughter's there, so he's going to play softly with them because his daughter's involved. If his daughter weren't involved, he'd probably just have smashed in and shot them all already. Which, yeah, basically means he's very unsuitable to be a leader on that basis. And indeed, he himself says that when she inevitably comes round, I feel she will make a worthy successor to the position of overseer. Might have to do that sooner rather than later. But what's actually important in here is the external contact report. Read that on the terminal. And the vault recently received unexpected radio contact over the government vault tech frequency from an organisation calling itself the Enclave. Government codes are valid according to the vault's ancient records and the Enclave put forward an offer of amnesty and unity with the official remnants of the American government in exchange for access to the vault and its data stores. They claim that our vault passwords no longer match their records, preventing them from extending their offer in person. After brief negotiation, I have refused entrance to the Enclave. I cannot trust my vault and its inhabitants to an unknown factor, much less one that would so gallantly suggest abandoning our vault's great mission, all the more reason to prevent the rebels from opening the vault to the likes of them. The Enclave want to get into the vault. And we know what the Enclave do when they want something, they just come in and start shooting. So potentially, for the wrong reason, the Overseer might actually be right. But I think Amata is probably for the best, and I think she'll be able to figure this out. I mean, the, the only real bad scenario is if you uh, sabotage the reactor, and thus the vault inhabitants all leave, there is a random event that then starts being available to come up at random event spot, where Amata is being interrogated by the Enclave, and she can be killed. In fact, they will try and shoot her. You have to kind of kill all of them before they kill her if you want to survive. But yes, uh, it doesn't end well anyway. But I think Amata is probably smart enough to handle this. 
Overseer, I'm afraid your suitability is just no longer appropriate. Amata will see this information when she becomes Overseer and she can make a decision based on that. But I think she will be a better Overseer than you can be. So let's present him with the evidence we've got. What do you want? And now, other than my speech check, I also have this piece of evidence. So a new dialogue option has come up. You can't even keep your security in line. They're planning to raid the rebels. Damn it! I told them I won't let this degenerate into violence again. The vault simply can't take the instability anymore. But maybe you're right. They simply can't stand the pressure anymore. And now the purity and perfection of my vault is crumbling all around me. And we can tell him two things to try and ease his worries. Humanity isn't about pure genetics. It's about never giving up hope even now. Or well, the only mission your vault ever had is to keep its residents alive. I'll go for the latter. <laughs> And you expect me to believe that the only way to do that is to let them travel out in the wastes and mingle with those savages? I suppose it would allow them to stay alive, and we could still keep the vault as our safe haven. But it'd require a new type of leader. And I know only one person with the proper attitude to do that. I'll inform my daughter Amata that she is the new overseer. Effective immediately. Indeed, for that, I've gained karma. He bloody sprints off to tell her he's in really a big hurry. And with that, I've stopped the Overseer. Everything's fine. You go that way. I'm going to go the faster way. Also, I do need to check quickly. How much bloody karma did I just gain? Not that much. I'm still neutral. Good. And now let's go and have a chat to Amata, who I'm guessing will have already heard the news somehow, even though I came the most fast and efficient route. Faster than the Overseer, but whatever. I just heard... My father says he's stepping down as overseer. He won't tell me why, but I have to assume it's something you said to him. Is, is she supposed to be crying right now? I I don't know why she's crying. <laughs> I think she's supposed to be crying. I'm not entirely sure. I said a little talk with him. You both care about the Vulture residents, but in different ways. And he didn't even realise how wrong he was. I set him straight. Um, I did have a little talk with him, but... Let's let's be nice to her, as that is her father. You both care about the Vault's residents in different ways. It's hard to forgive what he's done, but I suppose I can understand why he did it. I'm glad you brought him to his senses. But now there's a new overseer in charge, and I'm planning on opening the Vault. This time for good. It's a bright new day for the Vault, but I'm afraid there's one thing that has to change. You had to kick me out for no well-explained reason. All right, fine. Please. If you really want to help the vault, you have to go. And indeed, I understand, Amata. Goodbye. We can never really thank you enough for everything you've done. It's not much, but take this with you to remember us by. It'll be a while before we're actually ready to go outside. But once the vault is stable again, maybe we'll see you out there. So, I guess this is goodbye for now. But with luck, we'll meet again. And I've got a modified utility jumpsuit. I uh, can't remember what the benefits of that are. Let's have a look see what it is. Modified utility jumpsuit. That is... That's not even that bad. I mean, obviously, armor-wise, it's bloody worthless. But, um... Repair plus five. Oh, wait. Uh, it's okay. Uh, it's okay. Like, the repair plus five is no better than the basic jumpsuit. Rad resistance plus ten honestly isn't that useful. Rad X together with just a high endurance and medicine is better anyway. Luck plus one, that's kind of nice, just because there's not actually that many things in the game that give you uh, bonus luck, like um, Free Dog's Head Wrap is one of them. So if you had that on your head, you know, the modified utility jumpsuit for plus one luck there, that's all right. It's it's okay. Uh, I probably won't actually ever wear it or use it for anything, but if you were going for a kind of a heavy critical strike build or you were in like an absolutely desperate situation where you had to basically, yeah, you had pretty much, ooh, the Overseer's here. Hello, Overseer. Are you actually going to tell her? Amata, everyone, listen closely. After a discussion with your friend, I've made an important decision. She already knows. That is why I cannot remain your Overseer. Father! Acting! Amata, I appoint you Overseer in my place. You've proven you have what it takes to make hard choices for the good of the vaults. I'm just sorry I didn't understand that earlier. Consider it one of many mistakes I've made. Thank you, Father. I'll do my best to keep us all safe, inside the vault and beyond. 
Excellent. I'm not sure I've even ever seen that speech before, so that's cool. And with all of that done, we can indeed head on our way. Lovely. And so we leave the vault one last time. I'm guessing that indeed uh, the password to the vault will probably be changed after we go. But does the door auto close behind us? Can't remember if it does that a second time. It would be nice if it did. But yep, there it goes. Closes behind us uh, when you're far enough away that there's no way you could get back through behind it, sadly. Uh, that is sadly closed up. Trouble on the home front completed. A fairly generous uh, 300 XP to be got out of that. The door is closed. And I'm guessing if I were to try and enter the password now, Amata has already changed the password again. So, this time, I don't know the new entrance password. Well, 101 sealed away. Um, though there is a nice thing, which is, uh, as I mentioned before, if you go down Butcher's Route and destroy the Vault React so everyone has to leave, you run into the event uh, later where basically uh, all of the Enclave... Well, there's two events, actually. One is a Martyr being interrogated and then potentially killed by the Enclave. Uh, the other is you run into a bunch of uh, Vault 101 exiles who are hostile to you and will shoot you on site because they hate you because of what you've done. However... Under this circumstance, now there is going to be a random event that I might run into, though it's fairly unlikely at this point. I'm only going to run into like a few more random events before the end of the game. And the event in question is you run into one of the members of the vault. I can't remember who it is. I think it might be Freddy Gomez's sister, Pepper Gomez, actually. You run into her. She's wearing like leather armor and she's saying, oh, we're doing really well. We're trading. We're successful. And the implication is it's going fairly well. Though the point about the Enclave is never really brought up again, though I'm guessing Amata's going to be careful enough to keep the vault's door closed to outsiders. I'm sure she'd be sensible. She seems like she's got a sensible head on her shoulders. I'm sure it'll all work out fine. And one last quest brings me back to Rivet City, the replicated man. But obviously nothing to do with this here little kind of water check-in station down here. Instead, yes, indeed, replicated man takes us down to uh, the Broken Bow. Now this I needed, lock well, you don't actually need Lockpick 100 for this. A lot of people miss this, which is um, there's two ways to get into Pinkton's lap. Which is, there's a door over there that is very hard locked, lock pick 100. However, down uh, there where the cursor is right now on the centre of the screen, if you go underwater, there is a door. No lock on it, completely open. You can go in via that way. Uh, you don't need any, like, in fact, there are no breathing perks in this game, so I don't know why I just said that. Uh, you can get in there very, very easily. There's little pockets of air dotted along, and that will bring you up onto the floor, kind of going in that sort of direction, onto the floor that Pinkton himself is on. But you pass by some Maya Lurks. And honestly, at the level I am, there's a very good chance of Hunters and Maya Lurk Kings. Both of those are still very, very dangerous. I might be able to, you know, if they charge at me, I can shotgun them in the eyes, but it will be extremely close quarters. Because I'll be underwater, they might run into me and be following me around and be extremely close to me, and I won't even be able to do anything to stop them. And then, like, we'll both step onto land together, and it could go horrible. Oh, hello. What's going on? What is going Rivet City Security. Brahmin. Rivet City. What on earth is going on over there? That's not a that's not a random event. There's no random event. Oh, flip. I might have just taken a rad there, never mind. Are you want to fight him in to go? Just check your health. Yeah. One of these guys, both of them actually aren't at full health. There's been some form of scrap. That's interesting. Oh well, never mind, not really relevant. We should be way far enough now away from the subutes that we can just run over to here. So yeah, very hard lock on this door will get you straight up to the deck that uh, that Pinkerton's on without having to actually run into any of the Mylux whatsoever. Whereas if you want to go in the easy way and you don't have very hard, you will have to fight a couple of Mylux, which is not, well, I guess like a Mylux king and a hunter in very close quarters, they can be dangerous. Even even for me, if I put on my, like, my special power armor uh, from Operation Anchorage, it would be dangerous. So I'm gonna go in like this, all nice and hidden, there we go. Second bobby pin, in fact. That's not even that bad. This area is completely full of traps, by the way. But they are traps tied to mines, pressure plates, trip wires. Pretty much all stuff that, uh, yeah, because I've taken light step, is not an issue. However, as you can, you can sort of hear the scuttling. The scuttling of the Milex there. The problem is, they can stumble upstairs. They're very unlikely to, but they can. And if the Milex decide to scuttle upstairs, they could in theory, trigger a mine. And this area is also full of explosive gas. So I really want them to not do that. So I'm just going to ignore all of the loot around here because all of it's booby trap. because Pinkerton, 
you know, has done a very good job booby trapping this area. So like all these areas, if you open up these doors, there's like, uh, there's pressure, yeah, there's a pressure plate there that's, I'm not sure what that is. That might be a grenade bouquet and this area is full of flammable gas. So that would be a really, really big issue. So just keep going around here. Ignore, yeah, you see there's a flipping, what triggers that? Something's gonna trigger that. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna disarm that. Just in case, because I don't bloody trust it, and I'm not sure what actually triggers it. And I'm really scared, because I don't know this area that well. I think this area is... This area is safe, but like that terminal over there is, of course, a fake terminal. The actual button to open Pinkton's lab is this button here. It's a good... It's a really good trap. Uh, but if we actually go around the back of this thing, uh, we can actually... If we go up to, yeah, the real panel, then... Oh, you need explosives, not science. I thought that was a science check, not an explosive check. Instead... Activate the switch, and we can make our way into Pinkerton's lab. And once you're through the door, you are safe. But I'm hidden for now. But this place is actually, like, full of... I think it's like, multiple skill books in here, if I recall correctly. Obviously, there is a bottle cap mine that is, for some reason, not... Yeah, you can take that and it's not stealing, but using his workbench is apparently stealing. For whatever reason, he's just decided that's the case. Yeah, I think there's more than one uh, skill book around here, if I recall correctly. There's like, there's definitely more than one good thing around here. Let me just check around. So we've got Dean's Electronics and Big Book of Science. Nice. And then just a big pile of bottle caps, all sorts of things. Most of the stuff. Is that a second stealth? Yeah, two stealth boys. Um, with pilot lights, sensor modules, uh, motorcycle handbrake, and motorcycle gas tank. He's basically giving you all the equipment that you'd actually need to build your own shish kebab right here, which is cool. Plus there's a load of other just like really good quality stuff that you might need to make various things. There's like a toy car, wonder glue. It would not surprise me if we found a paint gun somewhere around here. So in other words, he's giving you most of the equipment to also build your own um, dart gun. If you happen to need one of those, open up this toolbox. Just a plunger and scrap metal, not really in that case. How the hell did you get in here? Hmm. <laughs> I suppose you can't be all that bad if you made it this far without dying. He's not kidding. He's probably the best person in the entirety of Fallout 3 at laying traps. He's really laid some really good traps out. And let's discuss the facial reconstruction and mind wipe for an android. What are you talking about, girl? I don't know anything about any of that. And uh, what did you call it? An android? What's that? And come on, it's in your best interest to just tell me. Fine, whatever. He gives up very easily. Calls himself Harkness now. Comes in and wants a memory job. I took new memories and replaced his old ones. Don't believe anyone's done that before. Certainly not down here. That Commonwealth tech isn't all that fancy when it comes down to it. I'm also the only one in the wasteland with the skill and the nerve to perform facial surgery. That android flesh ain't so different than ours. You want proof? I documented the whole thing. So I could rub it in the face of Dr. Lee when I need to rankle her feathers. I hate that snooty bitch. And indeed there, there's a lot of kind of interesting stuff that feeds very nicely into Fallout 4 that suggests that they really knew what they were going to do with Fallout 4 when Fallout 3 came out. Those of you who've played Fallout 4, especially and have kind of done a lot of investigating around the Institute, will be uh, familiar with the fact that a couple of kind of incidental details he mentions there do indeed go on to have some relevance in Fallout 4, which is very, very interesting indeed. And uh, where is this proof, in fact? It's all in my computer. Here's the password. See for yourself. Hell, just take these pictures and this holotape. Straight from the synth man's lips. And I think Harkness should be told I'm going to declare. I suppose you're right. But don't worry, I didn't really wipe his memories. I just buried them. But you can get them back. All you need to do is use the recall code. Just say to him, activate A321 recall code violet, and that will activate the hidden subroutines. Okay, very, very nice. And what else can you tell us about what will be the future of Fallout 4? Let's see how much of it turned out to be accurate and true. In particular, what about the Commonwealth? Most of it's blasted nothing, just like here. But there's talk, rumors mostly, about a place called the Institute. That's where Zimmer and that android came from. God knows what else they got going on in there, but it puts our tech to shame, that's for damn sure. 
Well, not too much detail, but certainly all turned out to be true in the future indeed. And he's also a person who could perform a facial reconstruction on you if you decide you want your characters to look a bit different, which is always lovely. So once again, just sneak your way out, not touching anything. Here's a fun thing I hadn't noticed before. On your way back out, there was a lock mechanism switch. Put that back up, and the door relocks, but easy rather than very hard. There's not that many repeatable actions in Fallout 3, but that is indeed one. So yeah, you could, if you really wanted to, you could go through that door and unlock it easy over and over, I guess, for a really, really, really slow, crappy way of grinding experience. But to be honest, in Fallout 3, just shooting, uh, regenerating monsters is almost certainly a better way. Anyway, back to Rivet City itself. And at this point, we're basically choosing who we decide to take that information to. We could go to Harkness himself or to Zimmer. Except, here's the interesting thing, of course. Um, Harkness gives you a pretty darn good, but for me, pretty much worthless uh, plasma rifle thingy. It's alright, it's not great. Whereas Zimmer promises me access to some unique Institute tech, and indeed it is completely unique within the game. You cannot get it anywhere else. So I've decided I'm going to turn over the android to Zimmer instead. It's probably evil, but eh, whatever. I am, of course, aware you can go into Beat Harkness, get the plasma rifle, and then go and get the reward from Zimmer, and then just murder Zimmer if you've got Harkness's permission to do so. However, that does come with a small problem. Uh, specifically, the issue that comes out of that is you have to take out both uh, Zimmer and Armitage, his bodyguard. Now, they're not that tough, but they're tough enough to take out in a single round of that that I don't want to risk being shot by Armitage. So instead, I'm just going to turn over Harkness to uh, Zimmer. Not just, I don't think I've ever done it before, so I'm kind of curious to see what it actually looks like if I do when he goes and reclaims Harkness. Hello, Zimmer. And I found your android. It's Harkness Rivet City Security Chief. Harkness, you say? Yes. Yes, that makes sense. He used to work for a special branch of the Commonwealth Police, after all. And he's right here, in Rivet City? Excellent. I must wait. Find an opportune moment to confront him. Thank you for your discreet assistance and continued discretion regarding this matter. And now for your payment. This combat module will directly affect your central nervous system. I think you will find it quite beneficial. And indeed, I have just gained wired reflexes and apparently lost some karma because slavery of sentient beings is wrong. Advanced technology from the Commonwealth has increased your reaction speeds, gaining you a higher chance to hit in VATs. I believe it's a 10% increase to hit every single VATs shot off wired reflexes. So for me, way more useful than Harkness's rifle. And indeed, I gained 300 XP for finishing that quest, and I believe he is now heading straight to the marketplace to go and deal with Harkness with his own recall code, which will obviously be different for mine, because my recall code that I got off the Doctor was to make him remember who he was, whereas presumably Armitage and uh, Zimmer will be saying the actual recall code to actually get him to go into his, like, passive I am a robot bleep bloop mode so that he'll just kind of quietly and obediently head back to the Commonwealth. Fun fact, by the way, even though he's nowhere near tough enough to actually really be one, Armitage is supposed to be a Corsa, one of the third generation synths that's uh, so very, very dangerous. You can tell because if you actually shoot him, he's got a robot component on him. Obviously, what Fallout 4 would subsequently go on to call a synth component. Curiously, Zimmer also, if you kill him, has a robot component on him, but whether that indicates Zimmer actually is a synth himself, or whether that just means Zimmer is supposed to be like, you know, because he has a connection to the synths, maybe he just has some components on him, it's unconfirmed, but I'm not really sure. Possibly. It seems unlikely, based on what we learned about how high up in the Institute Zimmer is, that Zimmer would actually truly be a synth. There you are! I must say, you had me completely fooled. You're very clever, A3-21, but not clever enough. Now, come with me. What the hell are you talking about, Zimmer? I swear, I've got enough crackpots on his damn boat. You're coming back with me to the Commonwealth. You're a very important android. You're just a bit confused. Your memories have been altered. I'm going nowhere. I want you off this boat, immediately. I'm done suffering your nonsense. You want to do this the easy way or the hard way? Of course we will be doing things the easy way. I have no intention of harming you. 
It's time to bid your farewells, Harkness. Zimmer. That's it. You leave me no choice but to use force. A3-21. Initialize factory reset. Authorization code, Beta-5-3-Alpha. What? Alpha. What? So Harkness flops to the ground, pops back up again, and now starts just obediently following. Does he say anything? We speak to him? A3-21, awaiting initialization protocol parameters. Nope, he's been completely, 100% wiped. And it would seem that they've just disappeared out of the world immediately. I'd like to think maybe they've just teleported their way back to the Commonwealth. Who knows? But uh, yeah, they've just, uh, they walked through this door, and they weren't here on the other side. But you know what? I've done them a favour. The Institute has fluffy towels. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's enough of this sort of thing for now. We have got our way up to the next level, and by doing that, we have crawled our way back up to 93 out of 560 on the true health counter. Just a little bit under 100 hit points to complete the remainder of the game. And next week, ladies and gentlemen, it's the beginning of the end as we head on the final big quest of Broken Steel to finish this all off. Once and for all, we have got to make our way on a not that bad, but equally not entirely safe journey to Pennsylvania Avenue. We've got to make our way through Presidential Metro where there are a lot of very dangerous robots. And then at the far end, the airport and the crawler within. It's absolutely filled with enclave troops who have already done so, so, so much damage to me in this run already that they are certainly not to be taken lightly. So, ladies and gentlemen... That begins next week, and we shall see what we can do. But in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Fallout 3, You Only Live Once. The final preparations before we commence the final push. Thank you very much, and goodbye. My milk gave me a sign, and it said tomorrow you will do something that will change your fate. Is my character simultaneously using a phone, using a laptop, smoking and driving in a rainstorm? Hello headquarters, I've got a problem. Yes, yes, it's the milk again. Sorry, what were you saying? I was looking at this biscuit. You know what, mate? I'm confused too.